Okay, is all. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Let me introduce uh, Dr. Buck. So she's um, she's the, uh, 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 taught uh, astronomy uh, at Hornell College uh, um, some time ago. That's what, that's why I know her from. And uh, we've been uh, you know from time to time uh, get in touch by email. And if we have some uh, grand uh, ideas, you know, I, I kind of uh, you know try to include her because she she has a background uh, also in. Uh, research in education is that right right so you have a background is that right so and i think she did her undergraduate very impressive she did her undergraduate at princeton is that right that's right okay so yeah so i'm calling the the conference here you know just to get an idea of um you know what we can do um with the uh with uh with uh with the nsf uh so basically we don't have we don't have uh as far as i know we don't have any um any plans to write any proposals right now so right now it's uh because you know uh, so we you know uh Last month, I think, um, um, uh, wrote, wrote about the uh, the, uh, the her idea about uh, doing some uh, teachers uh, training with NSF. So that's where you know got us all excited about you know thinking about NSF again. So um, yeah, and I, I I sent out I made a little uh, five five six page uh, PowerPoint thing uh, for people to um, to uh, 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 kind of look at what 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 we could talk about you know today. So again, you know. Uh, there's really nothing concrete right now uh, on our side, you know, uh, on uh, from this uh, this thing. And I was told that you know Harnell is doing something uh, much more concrete than than what what we have. So um, uh, you know uh, that's that's <clears throat> basically uh, you know, uh, why I call this meeting and to see what 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 we could have, what's on the table, what what we can plan plan for, you know, um, you know, three six months down the line or maybe. 12 months, you know, and um, okay, so uh, since I kind of know everybody here, so let me just kind of quickly introduce the people. Uh, Celso, he's my colleague at the, at the um, Evergreen College uh, uh, in astronomy and physics. Uh, we also have the, the, the students from the physical science club and uh, in, um, in, uh, in Evergreen. And Slava, you're, on, you're online as well, right? Yes, I am. Okay, yes. So we also have uh, Dr. Becker, chemistry uh, in, uh, at, at Harnell, and I'm not sure if uh, Ricardo is there. So I also invited people from Stanford, uh, Livermore, the, the mentors, so, uh, and also Dr. Jewel. I don't know if she's going to join us. Dr. Jewel yes, from... Uh, I'm oh, okay. Hey, hi. hi hello. How are you? Okay. Hi. Dr. Jewel from NBC. So th thank you. Thank you for joining, you know. Um, uh, and so this is basically a... Um, a you know, a gathering where we just kind of talk about things. You know, I, I we don't like. I will be really honest with you. We don't have any concrete idea right now, but mainly uh, see what we have, what we can do. Can we combine our ideas? And let's see if Zoe can give us some input as to um, it, it, do we have a proposal? Do we have a proposal sometime? So I heard Harnell is doing some kind of a, a serious work or in the line of a, 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 a I use uh, 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 some kind of improving undergraduate uh, STEM education. So, um, and, um, you know, right now we, we, we're not doing, I don't think we, we have time to do anything like that. So we, we're just, you know, mainly, you know, talking and, and, you know, uh, see what's okay. So I, I wrote that, I, I wrote the five page thing. I uh, hope, you know, you guys got a chance to look at it. Uh, so we, we're going to have a schedule of, would, uh, would different you like, people. Would you like uh, me to show yeah. it to, to, to display for you or what do you like to do? Uh, I don't have it with me. Do you know how to do it? I sent out that, that PowerPoint thing. Uh, do you have it? Uh, can you open it up? Sasso? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Why don't you, you keep, um, Okay, so basically, it's it um, so we have I, I, I have uh, I uh, f four lines. Uh, uh we, we like uh, Zoe to tell us about a little bit more about her idea. Uh, then I have I included on there uh, the students' contribution. You know, uh, I've been at you know many NSF uh proposal writing sessions. As far as I know, we never really ask students to give their input. So I also invited students to see uh, to see what 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 they like uh, NSF uh, grant if we get one uh, uh, would do for them. And I have some ideas. And of course, also you got your your middle school to university uh, project, uh, which is based off of the includes thing, you know. So um, yeah. So maybe we let so we talk, you know, and see uh, what what you think about the um, you know uh, the, the 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 teacher training thing that you were talking about. Um, maybe can you. Uh, Tell us more on that. Yeah. So, um, thanks for the introduction. So, like, uh, like 
like Suwan said, I am an education researcher at BSCS. So my PhD is in science education research. So, so NSF grants are my bread and butter. I am paid almost exclusively by NSF grants. Um, so one of the things that we do at BSCS is we do a lot of professional development with teachers, usually K-12 teachers. And we have this one program in particular called Stella um, that's been particularly successful um, in throughout K-12. We're doing it in high school right now. Um, and I think it's actually a program that could be really helpful at community college. So I did, I taught at Hartnell for three years. Um, it was a couple of years back. Uh, and I am particular, I'm, I'm very passionate about community college. I think it's um, a really important place that's being neglected right now in terms of funding, in terms of NSF funding, um, in terms of uh, where, where we're focusing our science education research efforts. So I want to be involved in more grants that are involving community colleges. So I reached out um, to a couple of my contacts at Hartnell because I've got some ideas and I, and I want to be working in community colleges. So um, the one of the ideas that I'm working on, actually I'm working with Shannon Bliss, who's the STEM, um, the head of STEM at Hartnell. And when, after I reached out, she said, um, I'd like to help you with that grant, but first, can you help us with this grant due in March? So um, I think you hinted at this a little bit, but there is an IU, there's kind of two different IU solicitations that are of interest here. Um, one is the IUS for Hispanic Serving Institutions, so it's the HSI IUS, and that's due in March. And that's the one that I'm working with Shannon um, and a couple of other people on, and that is, um, that's already in the works and the idea would be to study the impact of these kind of short workshops um, for students. Uh, but then what I'm interested in is the IUS that's due in October. And IUS, um, again, is is improving education for in undergraduate institutions, something like that. Improving in in Improving undergraduate uh, Improving undergraduate science education. Science education, yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so it's got a rolling deadline, but the rolling deadline ends in October. So really, we really could submit any time. But what I'm interested in is bringing this stellar professional development to community colleges, to Hartnell and or Evergreen, um, because I think it could be really impactful. It's been really impactful at the K-12 level. Um, and what I would like to do, because I think there's a lot of changes, it's very different teaching in a community college context than in a K-12 context, but there are some overlaps. Um, what I was thinking about doing was collaborating with people at the community college, uh, faculty, students, to figure out how can we change this to make it relevant and applicable in community college, and then apply it um, and see if we get interesting outcomes, see if we're changing the way that teaching is happening in the classroom at community colleges and seeing if that impacts student outcomes, um, like how, how, how much students are learning. And also, I'm interested in things like um, how often students are getting their associate's degrees, how often students are transferring to get um, four-year degrees, that kind of thing. So that's why I contacted Hartnell, is that I have this dream of bringing this professional development, which I think is really powerful, to the community college level. Um, that being said, I, um, I, I, I'm hoping to make that happen, but I also want to help you guys with something that you're interested in. Um, a good portion of my time is spent making partners and coming up with grant proposals and putting in grant ideas. So, um, so I'm here as a resource for you as well. Yeah. Can I, can I ask you a question? A quick yes. question? Um, this uh, project that you, you you are trying to uh, coordinate and, and develop in community college, um, <clears throat> how many months would it be running? And, and that's the first question. And second, um, what exactly the, the, the professors would be doing in it? I mean, once the workshop or, or the project is over, what would be the carryover? Right. So um, that's something that... Um, that needs to be figured out. And I'd like to figure that out collaboratively rather than just um, coming in and telling you guys what I think it should look like. But what it looks like now in K-12 is it's a week, sorry, it's two weeks over the summer, um, followed by a couple of days over the school years that we call study groups that are just kind of check-ins. Um, 
So that's how I'm imagining it right now. Um, and it, there's also um, filming in the classroom. So we asked, we asked teachers at the K-12 level, and I would imagine asking uh, professors at Hartnell to do a little bit of video of themselves um, for, for them to, for those professors to look at. It's not something public that we take or show anybody else. Mm. Um, so that's part of the professional development, is analyzing your own teaching on video. Uh, as for how long the entire project would be, there's two different versions of IUSE. There's a three-year and there's a five-year. So depending on what we want to do, um, we could apply for either three years of funding or five years of funding. Um, and then if we do something exploratory, which is like a three-year, I would imagine it ending at the end and then applying for more money to do leadership development. But in a five-year, we could potentially build in leadership development as well, so that even though for the first year or two, myself and other people from BSCS would come out to lead the workshops, eventually that leadership would move over to faculty at Hartnell, so that if this was something that they wanted to continue, there would be faculty at Hartnell who would lead those same workshops. Does that answer those questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, as, of, uh, as of now, you don't have a lot of specifics, but uh, you would like to develop the specifics uh, in, in coordination with Hartnell professors and, and Evergreen uh, professors in case we all yeah. come aboard. Okay. And I can tell you a little bit about what it looks like in K-12. or in, in, I'll tell you about what our high school program looks like. That our would be nice. I mean, you, you guys get together and then exactly what you do. Um, so what our high school program looks like right now, it's specifically for biology, but it could be for any subject area. Um, so, but it is, it is subject area specific. So we wouldn't want to just say, you know, all of STEM, we would want to choose maybe a couple of different departments mm -hmm. because the professors work together to create a storyline. Um, and if you have, you know, biology professors and computer science professors and math professors all working on maybe like an astro astronomy storyline that's not going to make a lot of sense for them and how to apply that in their classroom. Um, so, but what we have them do is two weeks over the summer, we spend time studying a theoretical framework for what we know works in the classroom based on research. Um, and that framework has two lenses. One is about student thinking um, and revealing how to, to use questioning to reveal student thinking and then how to use other strategies to support student thinking. Um, and really making student thinking visible in the classroom, which I think is particularly important for lecture setups. Um, because a lot of times student thinking can be lost there. Uh, and then the other lens is about creating a coherent science storyline. So, um, so that uh, how, how to link classes together, whether they're lectures or labs or something more inquiry based how to link those together so that when you come in today, you know what, why we're doing what we're doing and what it has to do with what we did yesterday and what we're going to do tomorrow. The, the, this is important. This is very important. Yeah. So those are the two main lenses in Stella. And I would imagine those staying pretty much the same with tweaks for the community college context. Any application or direct application for online settings, online classes? That's a good question. Um, I think in particular, so I, not yet, we've never done this with online classes, but that's a really interesting question. Um, how Cause this is a huge, this is a huge problem for online classes. They don't yeah. have this coherent kind of a, you know, sequence. The students come and go and sometimes there is no contact between the professor and students. It's a huge, huge problem. And lots of students want to go online, but they, they get lost. I, I think that's a fantastic point and a really great idea. I mean, I immediately was like, whoa, we should study this in online settings. Um, because that's a place a lot of students right now are doing classes online. Um, and I think that as we learn, we know what works in the classroom, but we really don't know what works in online settings. And how can we take these strategies and apply them in online settings? Is that possible? I think that would be a really interesting research question for NSF. Um, and so part of the professional development is giving teachers time to develop their own, uh, 
uh, like a, a unit length um, lesson plans. So um, in terms of what, like how much, how much money we could get to Hartnell or to Evergreen, um, I could imagine that that's, that's where the money would go that would be really benefiting the school in, in addition to the, um, the, the faculty getting this training. There would also be um, money going to time for the faculty to be developing lesson plans. Uh, uh, Siwan, do you know if Hartnell has uh, an online class um, in astronomy? They did, they did when I was there. Oh, they did? They do? Yeah, Pimal taught an online class. I okay. did not, but Pimal taught okay. an online class when I was there. I don't know if she still does. That would work well because um, the student populations are completely different, and I'm pretty sure uh, we have the same problems and and we want to improve the same way. And that would be a nice thing to do, and is a good development, I think. Yeah, I love that idea. Okay, any other comments? Anything you want to add? So I have, I have a question actually for all of you, which is that given that this is fairly content specific, um, is there a content area that jumps out at you as a place where you think, or maybe two or three maximum, that you think that this would be, something like this would be most impactful? Or just one where we have a lot of connections even, <laughs> chemistry or... Um, Astronomy obviously is where my expertise lies, but that doesn't mean we're limited to astronomy. Well, if I if I, if I think in terms of um, STEM in Evergreen, based on uh, the professors I know there <clears throat> that are willing to do something outside the box, besides just going to the classroom, give a class, and and make money and get out of there, um, only physics and astronomy, as far as Evergreen is concerned. And, and when, when I say physics and astronomy, it's the same, the same people. Mm -hmm. uh, C1 and me, probably. Oh, Mike Masuda, too. <laughs> yeah. so, Great. So well, that's, us. So that's really that, good to hear. That is, my... is easier that way. Uh, so okay. in Evergreen, it should be simple because we all kind of uh, work together. And not a lot of people. We control the classes. Uh, but we control all the way to the dean level. Dean level. When you get to the dean level, and when we pass that to talk to the gods, we, we can't go further. So we are limited by by the dean. We have an umbrella in our in our heads. And how many how many physics and astronomy faculty are there at Evergreen? There are two full times, five, two full timers, and probably six or seven adjuncts. And um, how many of the classes are taught online versus there? There is only one online class. There's only one online class. Yeah. And what, what class is that? That is astronomy. Intro? Intro, okay. yeah. Um, so, and then I can talk to Pimal and see what she says about at Hartnell. Because okay. um, astronomy is separate from physics at Hartnell, right, Suan? Oh, that's right, yes, yes. You know how many physics professors there are? Uh, I think right now it's one full-time uh, uh, instructor, and then I think we have uh, two or three uh, adjuncts, like myself, so that's pretty much it. And I think the astronomy have uh, uh, Dr. Morf and also uh, Philip Deutsch. I don't know if you know Bill Philip. Uh, so he also teaches Salinas High School. Um, but Philip is adjunct, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay. Yeah, he taught there when I was there. Okay, um, great. So I'm excited to throw some ideas on paper, um, especially about this idea of including an online component. I think that that's that, that could be a really cool project. Okay, so um, Dr. Ju, Elia, do you have any comments? Do you have any anything you would like to add or say uh, before we go to maybe the next uh, uh, next uh, speakers? Uh, so just see one. I have yeah. your PowerPoint here or your PDF file. If you want to display it, okay. If you, you know. Can you sh can you bring it up? Whenever you want. But do you want Dr. Leila to say something or?
Yeah, Laya, do you have a question? Do you have any questions, comments? No. I, I don't think I have anything in particular, but this does sound like a cool idea, and I like the content-specific collaborating across colleges. That's really neat. Okay. So, um, sorry, Layla, what, uh, what do you do? I'm physics at physics. Monterey Excellent. Peninsula College. Perfect. I like. So it seems like physics and astronomy is where all the expertise is. Uh, don't forget chemistry. We also have chemistry. We do have chemistry, but we don't offer online courses in chemistry because of the lab component. Yeah, we don't. I'm, have I'm gonna stop my video for a moment, but I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so would you like me to to show that? Yeah, uh, you can show the first page, I think. Okay. If you can get it. It's just it's just the outline of who's talking, who's gonna be talking, you know. Okay. So so we and then I put the students second and me. Third and you last, so so. Okay. okay. So sorry, I, I have a quick question. So Ricardo, Travis, Ken, and Chris, you guys are, are students who are in the physics club. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Uh, there are two different clubs, actually. So you're talking to, uh, t can you guys introduce yourself a little bit, please? Okay. All right. Hello. I'm Chris. So I'm Travis. And, and I'm Karen back there. And we're from the Evergreen Physical Science Club. Hello. I'm Ricardo. I'm the Society of Physics Students Hartnell College president myself. Okay, so yeah, let's not waste time. Okay, so um, I talked to you guys, uh, the, the folks at, uh, at Evergreen, you know, I talked to especially Travis um, about, you know, what would you, you know, if we get an NSF grant, what, what would you like this money do for you guys? Uh, not just you, but the students that you know, the STEM students in particular, you know. So uh, I had a long, not a very long, I had a, you know, 30, 30 minute conversation with Travis. So maybe uh, Travis sends you the newly cup, uh, newly minted club president. You can, you know, maybe share share with us. What what would you like, you know, from a student's perspective to see uh, an NSF grant done or do? You know, what kind of things that you like an NSF grant do for for you guys? Okay. Sure. Um, I'm not too familiar with NSF and what type of things they usually fund. But one thing I've noticed that uh, a lot of the community colleges are lacking in is uh, teaching students how kind of how to do research and being involved in uh, more long-term research projects than just a lab or a term project in a classroom. So that's one thing that uh, Dr. Fans help us set up here is kind of like a small project that we can work on over the course of a year or so. And um, I found that really beneficial. And to see more of those and more students involved in that would be, I think, beneficial for us as we transfer on to uh, the universities and stuff, trying to compete with people who have been in the UC system or the CSU system for the last two years and had exposure to that type of uh, um, technology and programs. That, so I, I find that really beneficial in general. So like Dr. Fan set up a cosmic ray project here that we've been working on and uh, we're trying to set up a few other types of research programs because of that as well. The things for students to kind of uh, get on board with without a lot of formal training and they can get a little bit of experience be mentored by older students as well and uh, faculty as well kind of guiding us along. <clears throat> Chris, so Ken, anything you guys want to say? So oh, this just from my experience, you know, since I started in this Cosmic Ray project, you know, I've been learning you know, more actually in this pro in this in this project than in you know some of my classes and like it's very beneficial to get hands on experience and like you know I start relating what I can do for my degree with like you know little things I'm doing. So uh yeah, you know, just to get more like to get more ideas in like different types of projects will be like helpful like so we can get more kids involved in our club, you know, not just like physics, you know. 
we have other projects that incorporate different you know fields to working together you know i think that's very you know realistic for you know once we graduate you know um i kind of have similar points at christy i think that like <clears throat> like the i like um i myself like was a student like i didn't have any experience and through these projects i was able to get experience mm -hmm. with like not just like coding or like you know circuit board design but also with like experience with teamwork which i feel would be very useful especially as i go to undergrad so i think uh, most like what i would like to see is maybe like just for more of these kind of projects sorry did you say teamwork like collaboration yeah like mm -hmm. collaboration great and you guys were mentioning like online classes and stuff like that. If we could uh, extend the uh, the nature of the club environment to extend into an online community where we could work with other students like uh, uh, Ricardo and Harnell and other people so we can collaborate between colleges even. Like the clubs can all talk to each other and work together on one project or pieces of the project as well. Uh, we could potentially have uh, more experience uh, teaming up with people from around the world, which is what you're going to experience when you get to a, a workplace environment. Uh, just a, a quick jumping in. Um, mm -hmm. There was a meeting um, of the people managing the Cowbridge and, and Compare, who are projects designed to, to take um, Cal State students that want to get a PhD in physics and astronomy, um, especially those underrepresented. And so one of the problems they have is they don't have a lot of a communication and bridges with community college. So they now organized um, uh, some system that uh, each com community college has one person in charge of uh, uh, the view, the vo divulge these, uh, the, these programs. And um, one of the things they mentioned was exactly that. They would like to, to have uh, physics clubs organized in the community college, instead of having them talking to professors and tutoring centers or, you know, uh, the deans and get the efforts lost somehow, uh, they would prefer to go and visit the clubs and even give in conferences and, and talk to the students in these clubs because they would have some material uh, there already uh, set. Uh, so they could probably uh, um, kind of... Um, give them some incentives to, to transfer to CSU, and then from there, going to UC and, and complete a, a PhD in one of these fields. So if the clubs of different community colleges talk among themselves, it's even better, because mm -hmm. uh, these uh, programs uh, might uh, get some more visibility. Good, very good. Uh, so Ricardo, okay, so I have not worked directly with you very much, but, uh, you know, uh, knowing you, the president of physics club at, uh, at Harnell College, and also you did several internships, you know, outside, very good internships, and um, also one internship at IBM, and I think you're still working on it. Maybe, can you give us a comment, you know, as, you know, if, if we get an NSF grant, what, what would you like the grant do for you and your fellow students from your club, from at Harnell, and things like that. Can you give us some ideas, uh, some comment? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so I have spoken with some of my peers and club members and other students, not even in the club, about what they would want for funding. So outside of just the general better equipment, you know, tutoring services, so on and so forth, that the college already offers. Um, People are really interested in doing a lot of things hands-on and somewhat related to the research project idea. But the interest wasn't primarily in a long-term research project, although I would probably enjoy one. And I know people probably are too, but the main feedback I was getting was that doing something that is somewhat like a project, but nothing that's like in, in, in your classroom type of project, where you do something for a grade and then that's it. It's something that would be interesting, applicable to everyday lives, or even something that they've never seen in their everyday lives. Um, as far as the online projects and group collaborations go, I definitely like that idea. Um, we had something like this when I took an online course where we had different groups, 
And obviously we were online, we were spread about the nation, so we could only collaborate online on our project. And it was actually for a writing type of class, but it was still requiring all the collaboration online for the project and research and things like that. Um, as far as collaboration locally with um, other colleges and whatnot, that'd be awesome. I think it'd be cool. If we had like some big project and we made like sub, you know, everyone works on a little bit of a piece and we could report in and then meet up or not and do it online. That's all cool too. Um, but I would say that's the main thing I got. As far as what we would talk about at the end of our REUs was we really appreciated the hands-on experience and the experience that you don't get from working in a lab that you wouldn't normally get at a college. So if we could do more in lab or hands-on activities outside of just your required lab unit requirements, that sound that sounded like it was what was really beneficial to everyone in my um, little uh, cohort is the word, yeah. Uh, also, Ricardo, since you're the, you know, uh, one of the few students, uh, if you don't mind, you know, telling a little bit about, you know, um, uh, your your experience at IBM and how it might Im might have impacted your 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 attitude or your work at, at Harnell or your study at Harnell. Any any comments on that? Um, you can tell us, uh, or if you have if you don't have it, that's okay. But you know, if you have something that um, I would say I, I wouldn't say that it was the, a huge impact. I would say my first REU. I think everyone's first internship really is what the bigger impact is, is to, you know, work in a team and have a specific mentor to work with and a specific goal in mind. So I guess, I don't know, just thinking in that sense. I'm not really sure if I'm capturing the right words here. Um, it gave a, a new view or, of life, I guess, in academics when you have your first internship. You're no longer just trying to get this, you know, piece of paper is that's what it seems like everyone's here for now. Everyone wants to know how to pass the quizzes and the exams, and that's it. It's like, well, okay, what about after that kind of thing? So maybe not necessarily IBM specifically, but I think everyone should have some type of internship where they have that type of experience, or maybe not internship, just that experience overall. Okay. Any other comments, questions? I, uh, so uh, this is, uh, I'm Oh, Gulam, hey, thank you, hey, congrats. Okay, let me just introduce you, hey, Gulam, yeah. good to hear you. Uh, so, uh, oh, uh, Gulam, uh, let, let me speak, sorry. So this is uh, Dr. Gulam Prax from Stanford. Uh, he's one of our mentors uh, with the students at Harnell College. So he has hosted three Harnell students and uh, over uh, uh, three different summers. And two of the students actually published a paper with that group. So Dr. Prax, uh, uh, I think he's from France, he's French, okay, and um, he's doing very interesting work at Stanford on medical physics uh, and, you know, uh, on imaging cancer cells, okay, so yes, go ahead, Guillaume, yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I, you know, I had the pleasure to work with three of the Harnell students, and I, I mean, I must very honestly say I was very uh, happy, it was a very, a very good experience, I actually think they did, they accomplished quite a lot working in the lab, um, and um, I, you know, I think the, the most surprising part is, you know, you would assume maybe college students, um, community college students are maybe not as prepared to do research in the lab, but my, my uh, experience has been they're just as prepared as, you know, their peers who go through four-year colleges, you know. Uh, we've also had students from, you know, other universities like Rice uh, and uh, Stanford, and I really, you know, I really don't think there's, you know, such a, a big gap between the different institutions. Um, you know, I think they, they show, showed a lot of curiosity. They were very motivated. Um, they were really uh, able to to uh, to be you know stealth stars and and be able to to kind of resolve problems on their own. So I, you know, I think this is it's been a really good experience. I'm really uh, happy to try to to support this program. I think for, from the you know in terms of the NSF, I think what can help is you know if um, so, so the, receiving students in the lab for you know eight to ten weeks it's always a an investment in time and you know we need to find uh, you know, i need to find people in the lab who are willing to to basically spend the time to train those people and you know get them started and get them give them an interesting project that they can complete in uh, in you know eight to ten weeks which is kind of a short time 
um, you know, uh, for, for research. And so I think what we've done in the past is uh, Harnell has been able to find grant funding to at least support part of the salary of the student, the stipend. And because, you know, Stanford is in a very expensive area, it's, it, it is, you know, there, there's definitely a need for financial support to allow, um, you know, students from, you know, the more remote colleges to come to, to the barrier and, and do uh, research in the labs here because it's, uh, you know, cost of living is very expensive. Some of the students chose to actually commute from Salinas, which is a really long commute uh, every day. But, you know, other students found housing, but it's still, you know, uh, so I think the, the, the idea was, you know, we would have a, a sort of a cost sharing where, you know, the lab can kick in some funding and the, the, the grant can provide additional funds to cover, you know, a, a portion of the of the stipend for the students to do the internship. Um, but yeah, and uh, in terms of another thing, maybe, you know, we, we should mention also is, you know, the aspect of diversity. Uh, so, you know, I work on uh, several training grants, which are um, more advanced level, you know, so these are training grants for PhD students or even postdoctoral students, um, people who are kind of further down the pipeline. And one of the issues for those grants is, you know, the the, the pool of applicants is, is very, has very little diversity in it. You know, that it's essentially, you know, there's something about the pipeline where, um, and NIH, you know, is very aware of that and they, you know, they really try to, to, to get a diverse pool of, of students in those training program. But when you get to the PhD and the postdoc, you know, it's a, it's very much homogeneous pool of, of applicants that, that we get for those programs. So I think, you know, um, you know, a program like the, the one you, you're suggesting can actually try to improve diversity, you know, by, by basically trying to, you know, promote STEM careers for people who would not consider it necessarily. Okay. I have I have a question here, uh, Guillaume. Um, when you host these students, that was over the summer, or is an all all year long project? How, how that works? Um, it's yeah, we've only done over the summer. <clears throat> I think it's um, it's just because you know you you can really dedicate uh, you know be full time on the project for two 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 months or three three months sometimes. Um, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, some undergraduates, more, more like local undergrads, they, they'll, you know, do maybe 10 hours a week in the lab. If they're local, because then it's easy, they can, you know, if they have time in, in between two classes, they can just stop by the lab and do a little bit of research and then go to the next class. Um, you know, because of, you know, again, if you're not local and you have to commute, I think it's, you know, a lot of the, the lab work is hands-on and it's hard to do remotely, so... Uh, and also, you don't really gain as much by, by working remotely. And so, if you have to commute from um, Hartnell or you know even Evergreen, I think it, it would may, it may be a little bit difficult to do that during the year, mm -hmm. unless the courses are online. And then you know you could take your courses online while you work in the lab. That's all, that's another another way you could do it. Oh, um, if I may, um, so I guess depending on the project. If you have one that is both uh, a little bit computer science oriented and one that is lab oriented, so maybe you're doing some type of uh, machine learning or something like that on it, that's actually what I've been continuing on attempting to um, with my mentor at IBM is I've been working remotely on a laptop, just VPNing in to do the work, mm -hmm. disconnect, and I'll go back to my schoolwork. I just thought I'd throw that out there. No, that's true. There are some projects that are very amenable to working remotely, but then you don't get the interaction with, you know, the, the personnel in the lab, you know, you, you're missing on maybe some of the, the learning opportunities that you would get by being on site, you know, as opposed to being on, on your computer remotely. Uh, but you can still do, you know, yeah, if you want a computer kind of project, then yeah, you can do a lot of work remotely, that's for sure, yeah. Oh, so maybe as in like, um, you need to analyze the lab work after you do it. So you, do, you don't touch the computer at all and just collect the data. And you can mm -hmm. analyze it remotely another day, go back and forth type of thing. Yeah, yeah you could do, you could, you could work that, like that, yeah. Um, Great, thank you, Gilam. Uh, yeah, uh, any comments? Any comments on? So, you know, um, Dr. Prax's lab is, it's uh, always been very impressive for us. Uh, we go, usually go to visit him, you know, every summer. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we, we learned a lot, you know, from just looking at some of the things they do. And, you know, um, 
and the students they they get a uh, quite a bit. But I think you know, yeah, it's a challenge because you know Silicon Valley, you know, being so expensive now, you know, uh, yeah. it's uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult you know, uh, to host host students. And uh, what about the um, you know, I talked to I don't remember that lady's name at Stanford. I don't remember her name. Um, uh, so there was a chance that you could uh, the students could stay. Uh, Partly, not the whole summer, but partly at the um, at the dorms at Stanford, there was something going on like that. I don't know. Is that that's a uh, that's uh, how 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 that? Uh... I think you know if you've been on the Stanford campus in the summer, there's of course the undergraduates are off, they they're not on the on campus, right? They're usually off to doing different things. <clears throat> so the dorms are empty, and but Stanford really uses those dorms. They they have so many programs during the summer. They have, you know, high school students. They have, you know, people from all over the country come for summer school on campus. And so um, it's a matter of priority, you know. Uh, they have REU programs. You know, it's, I think, um, so someone who comes to Stanford sort of uh, where, where you only have an agreement with, with the lab, I think you probably get a lower priority than if someone who's coming through an official Stanford program. Um, and, you know, we have to talk about, you know, there were also other issues we, we talked about, if you remember, one was that Stanford uh, initially wanted to charge some um, tuition uh, oh, yeah, that's right. yeah. fees, uh, for, for the students who come just for internships, right? They, they had, uh, and I think we were able to finally, uh, you know, get the issue of the of the tuition fees to be resolved and they, they really decreased them. They, they're not, you know, charging um, fees uh, as important that they used to be, you know, they used to charge almost like a thousand dollar per month, and I think now it's gone down to five hundred dollar for the whole summer. Uh, but still, you know, it's um, you know it, it it's an extra cost, and uh, student housing would be would be great. And I think you know you, you know we can if if there's a we we have an official program, you know, with NSF, you know, I think that probably gives us. Uh, maybe make it, make it easier to to negotiate with uh, Stanford to get some reserved housing for for the summer mm -hmm. uh, for, for the students, right? So that I think that would that would add to the experience too. You know, if the students are living on on campus, not only are they you know doing research in the lab, but then you know when they go back to the dorm, they you know they meet with all kind of people who are coming from different backgrounds, and you know they can have nice, interesting conversation with with students from all over the world. And you know, I think it's. Uh, it, it would be. It would definitely improve the the experience if we can live uh, in the residence on campus. Um, okay, very good. Any, anybody's got some comments? Um, I have. A, I guess I have a quick one. So, um, when I had my REU and um, I was able to stay on campus at UC Berkeley at the International House, and so you got to talk with the people from all over the world who are doing their graduate work there, or if they're doing another REU. Um, on the campus too, and it was really great to hear about all the different projects and all these different, you know, all these different people that were coming and going. If they were only there for a couple of weeks, um, there was even a couple of events. I think I can't can't quite remember what it was about, but it was like history of African ambassadors, and they were trying to stay there. Anyways, it was really nice to have that kind of you know international feel, um, just sitting inside your dorm kind of thing. So. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but it was nice meeting you guys. I have a meeting right now, but thank you guys. All right, no. Chris. Take care. Okay, Chris, you're taking out? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining. Oh, yeah, okay. thank you guys. Okay, any other comments? Um, well, I, I just wanted to mention that the, the proposal that we're hopefully putting in in March, um, which is due March 6th, so it's moving forward very quickly. I think it would fulfill a lot of what the students were talking about. Um, it's it's looking at how shorter experiences, like one day, can try and get some of the benefits of a longer internship, even though obviously an internship is much better for students who can't fit that into their schedule. And then studying to see if participation in those short workshops, like one day long, can actually increase students' confidence so that they enroll in these longer term internships and REUs. Um, so but I think that's kind of getting at a, a little bit of what you guys are talking about and, and could be helpful. Um, I also want to mention that um, NSF, at least the, the RFP 
RFPs that I know about, which are all education RFPs, they're not, they, they don't want to fund, they don't want to fund a lot of stuff on the ground. So they, they don't want to fund lab equipment. They usually won't even fund, um, you know, internships unless they have these specific REU calls, like the, the RUI and the REU calls where they're specifically looking to fund undergraduate research. But in the, um, in the education calls, they're mostly looking for education research, maybe on some of these programs, but they're not looking to actually fund the programs, which is, can be problematic. So just a warning there. Mm -hmm. So any other comments? Slava, Lila. Uh, well, I have actually, I don't know, a comment or question, a concern. I think, I don't know how education research works, but I imagine we would have a pretty small pool of students to sample the ones who would enroll in a workshop or a research program. And so how do we track that? Is that, is that a good enough sample size if it's like a dozen students or something? Or, or maybe I don't understand how this would work at all then. So um, I, I don't have a good picture of what this proposal would look like in my head. It, it sounds like right now we just have ideas of what students need, not necessarily what a research proposal would look like. But um, there can be good research done with 12 students, but it would probably be a qualitative case study. You wouldn't be tracking, um, you wouldn't be able to figure out an effect size of the intervention, for example. Okay. But that doesn't mean NSF won't fund it if it's good research. Okay, just questioning. I, I have no idea how this works, so thank you. Um, really quickly, um, the Assure Pro REU, before it became Assure REU, they did a the pilot with Hartnell students. I'm not sure who did the first proposal here at Hartnell to make that happen. Um, the only reason I knew this is because when I was applying to the REU the next year, I was wondering why I just said, are you a heart no student on there? Um, but yeah, there was someone here who made that connection and did the pilot and got it approved. It sounds like it became an REU here. I'm not sure who that was. Um, on that note, though, I do need to get going. So thank you for having me, everyone, and I hope this goes well. Thanks. Hey, great. Thank you, Ricardo. OK. All right. So, um, yeah, I think that person probably, probably uh, Andy Newton, uh, who was the uh, the uh, the uh, chief in the astronomy uh, uh, here at Hornell. Uh, yeah, okay. Andy, right. Andy, Andy Andy Newton. Yeah, Andy he, Newton he was doing a lot of uh, uh, proposals when I back in late eighties or early nineties when I when I was there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see that Dr. Bruce is there. Okay, from Livermore. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for 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 joining us. So yeah, we we are talking about you know uh, what community college can do to um, uh, uh, secure NSF funding. You know for um, you know mixture of different things. You know uh, you know some research, some uh, online courses, and you know things like that. Yeah, uh, Dr. Bruce, you're there, right? I I see your name there. So uh, yeah, uh, remember us uh, from Livermore uh, when we visited uh, your lab, and so yeah. Okay, any any other comments, questions? C uh, one, uh, just uh, a question about time. Um, yes. You yeah, said we're running meeting, out. We have six minutes. Yeah, you said that the meeting was was going to be one hour, and you have your proposal to to go through. So I'm I'm not really. Uh, this is just what I've written up, so I can kind of quickly talk about it. Can you turn to the the next page, uh, Celso, for, for yeah. us? So I'm just writing. I was as uh, so I was thinking about, uh, you know. So these are some of the things I think about: is community colleges. You know, you have a lot of students, uh, but very little research is going on. So my goal is that you know to try to. Um, uh, I, I don't know if this this sounds too ambitious to try to. Uh, because I'm coming from a research background, so I, I, I you know, I, that's what I put down to try to, you know, um, you know, I taught at community colleges for the past 12 years. So what I've seen is that is that like, you know, day in and day out, the teachers just go through the, the I think the same. Now, this, of course, this, this is my opinion, go through the same motion, the same textbook, and especially for us, like in physics, that's this stuff is like 100, 200, 300 years old, you know, so. Um, and so uh, I, I'm trying to. Uh, 
to 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 and and it's and you know there, there are no journals there are no research journals and no uh there's no research environment at all at a community college so i was thinking you know um uh maybe we can do something you know uh help to develop the teachers and the students uh and do some kind of quote unquote research um, it's not the publication type but it's <clears throat> it, it's still some activity you know um that you know uh that you know people could do um yeah so this is what i wrote down on this uh this this paper here so can you go to the next page uh, yeah. yeah okay so yeah um i i, I kind of write down what was i what was on my mind you know of uh knowing that you know got i uh i i, I think i submitted two or three nsf proposals one of them i written it myself and it was uh you know it was you know uh shot down but I got one really good review, one so good review. So um, just from looking at that, I think I have learned the lesson that you know, um, at least this is my 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 opinion that um, you know uh, you know uh, when you're a community college, you, you really at the the only place you can go is pretty much you can only go up, you know, you can't go. You can, you, that's the only place you can go, I think. Okay, and um, yeah, so I'm thinking about maybe something like a like a. Uh, um, um, a collaborative type of thing where we we can you know with different community colleges the, the people i know in, in this uh doing this uh, video conference and maybe additional additional teachers you know to join forces together and then maybe we can do a study uh on you know um the relationship between uh, uh students mentors and um and also external mentors like for example uh, uh our friends at livermore uh, Dr. Prax and maybe people at IBM. So, what's the dynamics of of the the mentor student relationship? Uh, what's the dynamics of uh, teachers, instructors, and students relationship when they're working on a project? So, can we do some studies like that? So, um, that's what what I'm kind of uh, uh, bringing together. And so, I you know, not coming from a research and education background, so I try to do as much as I can. So, I started making these surveys for Evergreen College for the physics, physical science club. So I asked some, you know, uh, basic questions regarding their interests and what they like to get out of this. And hopefully to form like a, like a little bit of a, 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 a preliminary work data for, for an actual proposal uh, to NSF or maybe some other uh, grant opportunity, you know, it just forms like a baseline, some groundwork for, for that, you know. And so, can, so, so can you maybe move to my last slide here? So diagrammatically, uh, that's what this is what I have, you know, uh, an NSF project without any name attached to it, but working uh, between different colleges, you know, um, and and like like uh, Zoe was saying, uh, discipline sp specific. So, um, so I mainly know the people from the hard sciences, physics, astronomy, and chemistry. So probably we're not going to have any biology people. Um, mm -hmm. unless they may be the biophysics. And so um, I know that uh, Dr. Bruce at Livermore, they do a lot of this. Um, uh, I was very impressed when I look at the, seeing that poster. They were doing, um, I don't exactly remember now, the carbon dating, right? The carbon dating on the human human body, some part of the human body. I was looking at that poster uh, in his lab. So uh, yeah, well, I mean, so uh, this is, again, very fake, nothing specific right now, but I'm thinking of maybe, you know, a um, couple of teachers, hello? Yeah, a couple yeah. of teachers at one college and a couple of teachers at another college and so on. So we have a group of people uh, working maybe uh, with students on some short, short term project or maybe um, even in the summer and, and to do a study uh, on, on, that, on that interaction, you know, because uh, from what I know going, uh, head on to try to get an NSF RUI research, uh, research. Oh, so IEU, sorry. Uh, IEU. So no RUI research at undergraduate institution. I think it's almost impossible, uh, for community college. At least that, that's my opinion, but you know, you never know, you know? So anyway, uh, so I think I have to like, uh, uh, uh change my tactics, change our tactics to see if we can secure NSF fund by way of education instead of by way of, uh, scientific research so um can i throw some thoughts out there really fast yes go ahead yes um so what you're describing sounds to me like i'm, I'm thinking through the nsf rfps and where something like that might fit um and instead of putting in an 
I use, which is really thinking about formal in the classroom type learning, it sounds to me like you should look into iTest. Have you looked at iTest? Uh, no, I think that's a similar program, right? No, I have not looked at iTest, no. So iTest is also an NFF, NSF RFP, um, and it's looking for, I'm trying to remember what it stands for. It's like something about technology and education. Um, so it's looking for, for um, but it's not necessarily technology. It's looking for um, places where students are going to be interacting with cutting edge research technology, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, where there's also interface with more traditional educational settings. So um, the reason I think that this might fit is that it's not K-12 specific because some of the NSF calls are K-12 specific, like the DRK-12 or most of the core stuff. Um, and it also, it, it sounds like the kind of questions you're asking fit with eye test, but you should look into it. And it's usually due in the fall. Um, uh, and how I have to head out, but it was really nice to meet you all. So excited let's, to be here. Okay, nice let's get in touch, Lila. Okay. Yeah. Let's thank keep in you. touch. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, so. So if you wanted to look into writing an eye test, I would be willing to to serve, like BSCS could serve as the research partner if Hartnell served as the prime. So we could be a sub a subcontractor on that to be doing the education research. And that would give you, and I could help write the research section um, and rewrite those research questions to help give you a little boost in the NSFIs. Um, because you have people who, that's all we do is education research who would be doing the research. Um, so I could help out on that. Could cool. you, um, do you think you could send me those surveys that you were talking about? Uh, actually it's in, in the back, it's, it's right in behind, uh, Travis, are you near the wall there? Are you where the, those surveys? Remember those surveys? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have them, uh, yeah, I, we can scan it and let you look at it. And and I'm going to have another uh, uh, post, like kind of like a midterm survey, mm -hmm. um, and have, have the students uh, fill it out, you know, and see what's the response I, I have. It is no more than half a dozen students. So, but, I, I, you know, I, it's, it's, but it, it, I think it kind of helps me to form a baseline, you know, as to where, where um, you know, what I what I, what uh, I, I could use as, as as ammunition for an NS, NSF grant. Yeah, yeah, I love the idea of starting with what students need. I also I, I I really like the idea, and this is something I've been trying to get off the ground and have never been successful with, of including students on uh, on NSF advisory board. Um, oh. I I think yeah, that's that very good. that that's something that um, is not done enough when we're when we're creating these advisory boards and figure out what what's needed. There needs to be the voices of students on those boards. So. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in something like that, but um, I'd like, Suan, do you think you could send me the email addresses of everybody on this call so that as we're writing these proposals, maybe I can reach out to the students and see if that's okay, something. They're, they're, they're right there. I think they're on that list. They're on that list. Travis, uh, Travis, Ken, and Chris, they're on, and Ricardo. They're what on that list. Uh, they're on the on the uh, the general email I sent out to everybody. Oh, so all the email addresses yes. are there? Yeah, yeah, including uh, Ken, Chris, Travis, and also uh, Ricardo uh, Mendez, he's uh, he's uh, from Cornell. Okay, um, I might still reach out to you because I'd like mm -hmm. the names of the people next to the email address. Because okay, 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 um, all right, yes, yes. So that I remember who is who and because there are a lot of people on this okay. call. Yeah. Um, but I actually have to go to, I have another meeting. Oh, well, so 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 can you can you uh, say something about your idea okay? Sorry about taking, putting you last. No, no you know, problem, can you, no problem. Okay. Um, well, uh, the idea, <clears throat> Start up about three years ago. Uh, there was uh, it, it came it came with statistics that seventy percent of uh, 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 PhDs in the United States, uh, about seventy percent of them, ended up teaching partially or full time in community college. Although community college um, require only master uh, degree, and and I thought, well, so you you might have a population of professors that have experience in, 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 in research. That's one thing. And the second thing, the statistics of underrepresented minority getting PhDs in astronomy and physics is ridiculous. Uh, African-Americans is almost none. Uh, female is pretty low. And, and Hispanic is, is also ridiculous. And then, and then we thought about submitting a proposal to include. And the idea we had was 
based on the fact we have an observatory and we have stargazings and there are a bunch of students and, and kids that go there, why not um, we sell the idea of research um, knowing that if you do research, ever do research in your life, like, like Ricardo said, it was a life-changing experience when he did research. So if somebody does research, that person will stuck, uh, will be sticking to, to STEM field and it's going to go all the way to the PhD. So the idea was, okay, let's initiate a program that we uh, bring high school students um, and bring them to community college to do research here with us and with community college students. And, and then the community college will provide support for the students. And, and then they, they, by doing research, they say, okay, now I want to be a scientist. I want to be a PhD in astronomy and physics. So, but then how, how we attract high school students say, okay, great idea. Let's go to the school. Uh, and then we create clubs. And then we were able to create a club in Evergreen High, which is a uh, high notch, a lot of money, uh, high school, and in Overfelt, low income population. So we were interested in Overfelt. Uh, the club in Overfelt was difficult to, to, organ to be organized. And we had the students participate in our meetings, except in the summer, because they had to work and they didn't have, they, they, they couldn't go. Now, the Evergreen High students, oh, they were all, 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 all in, in our meetings, they were excited, and they were doing a little research with me, and, and then, and then we, we realized when the kids get into high school, if they are underrepresented, they probably didn't have a good middle school, they will set their mind, I can do science, I cannot do science, science is not for me, physics is not for me. Uh, I, I prefer to do something else. And then we thought in this crazy idea, and that was our includes proposal, why we uh, don't outreach middle school and the high school students uh, help the middle school students uh, in their academics, especially math and, and science, and, and they are part of our programs. We will implement an international astronomical union uh, program in astronomy for the middle school prior to our stargazing. So I would have a few students that I could devote my, uh, uh, give my time to go through the curricula curriculum with them. It's a fun, fun laboratory um, and it's very nice. And, and, and that was the idea. So we submit the, the proposal. Uh, we got an excellent review, good and good, in the first uh, uh, part. And then we have to submit the whole thing. It was just few people writing. Uh, I, I was, was writing, and, and it was not, didn't pass the second part. Um, then Do you I, remember what your critiques were on the second so part? The second part, it didn't go through. And that Do was. Do you remember what, what they didn't like about it? Oh, God. Uh, they didn't like the budget. They didn't like the. Um, the references we, I, I didn't put any references because I don't okay. know your area basically, uh -huh. I have no idea. Um, they, 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 they couldn't understand why, I mean, there, there was no, there is not a, there was not a project manager because I, 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 I didn't know project managers were important. I thought I was going to manage this, but I can't be a PI and project manager and do these little uh, things on the side. I, I don't know. And there was not also the, the complaint about the evaluator. There was not an evaluator in, in, in the program. Right. So that, that sounds really promising because that's the kind of thing that I can help with is the, the writing of the proposal and making sure, I mean, if we wanted to house it um, or if we wanted to make BSCS a research partner, then you have, you don't have to be worrying about, well, so includes, does includes still exist? I don't know. I, I went to an includes workshop last year, and I my understand was to, this year would be the last one. So, but I don't know. I got I got dismotivated. Yeah. What does include stand for? Um, it's uh, inclusion. I, I don't remember exactly what it stands for. It's very idea, long. Yeah. Is to build <laughs> up community uh, awareness uh, on, from different segments and, and somehow you create a project, you fund a project that you can emulate, uh, all through the country. So mm -hmm. the, the idea we had is, okay, if we go to the middle school in underrepresented areas and have a kid there, 
right? Some 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 group of kids uh, that otherwise wouldn't uh, be involved with STEM, and we can prove they can be involved with STEM if we provide the assistance and the technology. Then that could be reproduced in our community college because they will have people that know how to do research first of all, and and then this includes grant the the national one would perhaps provide money for uh, this professor's release time. He, this is another thing. Community college will not give support to that because will take us out of the classroom. As you well know, community college's main mission is to teach, is to get a shovel and get his students to CSU. And, and, and if you are now outside doing fun research like C1 Fun like to do, they will say, okay, that's very good. We love you, but we'll not fund you basically. So we have to get sources from outside. So um, I, I think that that sounds really promising. If they liked it and the only thing they didn't like is the proposal, I can help you put together a, a proposal um, if you already have the partners and the ideas. I, I, I do, but I don't have the money. I can't pay you. That's the whole thing. And, and oh, no, as, don't as worry. You don't have to pay not, me. <laughs> uh, are you an angel or something? Do you work for No, free? I would write myself in a, I would write myself into the proposal. So if you got the money, some of that money would go to me. But okay. part of my so part of my job at BSCS, I'm paid to continue to write more proposals to try and fund myself in the future. Okay. To write more proposals, it's kind of an ongoing. What do you thing. want me to do? Do you want me to send you the proposal so you can take a look and? Yeah. So so in in all of these cases, you know, I wouldn't be asking you guys to pay me anything. I would want to work with you as partners so that we can try and get money to pay both you and to pay me. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, quick, quickly, I just want to add to uh, for Celsius. Uh, uh, you know, since I've been teaching at Evergreen, I, I'm really, really impressed by their astronomy program, especially the stargazing night. You know, where they have oh hundreds of kids with parents. You know, and just children, curious children. You know, coming to look at the telescope, look at the stars, look at the planets. You know, I mean, it's. You know, and and I have been telling Celso that you know they, they have a they have a fantastic program there that they can also get a like a maybe apply for like a NSF what it's called a NSF public outreach type of grant you know and that's really something they have something very established you know uh, and it's very impressive they also have lectures um, and also the cookies right and and the telescopes and it's it's pretty impressive you know and a lot of parents they come you know the little kids you know and so it's it's I I think it's really good you know. Okay. Are there any other comments? I think people need to go uh, to a different place. I got to go to go to a class at Evergreen tonight. I got to see you guys there. All uh, right. Hopefully, you know. Okay. I have a six o'clock class. All right. So, so Celso, can you can you follow up with uh, with Zoe? You know, with your with your includes. Yes. You know, I think she's really interested to uh, to help us out. You know. Yes. And I will look into the eye tests and uh, see what we can uh, come up with. You know. Another place you might want to look is ASL. I'm not sure if that's the right place. A I S L. Um, but that's that's about um, informal learning experiences. So when I heard your idea, I mean, this isn't this is a learning experience that happens outside of the classroom. Even though you're talking about students, where you're not talking about changing something actually in the classroom. So it could fit in an ASL. Okay, so it's A I S L, huh? A I S L. Okay, right. Um, so look into I test and ASL. So for for those two. My my bandwidth, <laughs> and I'm 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 bringing in an, a coworker of mine at um, at BSCS on at least one of these, and I'd probably bring in um, a couple. But um, my bandwidth for writing these things is not is not infinite. So what I would hope to do on most of these proposals, except for the one that I introduced, would be for you guys to be the primary on the grant. And you guys be the the PIs and do a, a lot of the writing, but I help with the research and making the grant proposal look good, um, and write myself in, in in a smaller role as either um, a co PI or something even smaller. And if you could send me a, a few blurb of your project, the one you're doing with um, with the schools, I would like to talk to the person in charge at Evergreen with the distance education. Um, and, and try to coordinate something with the astronomy online course. That, You're talking about the, the the professional development idea. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I can send you information about that, and there's also there's also a lot on our website. If you go to bscs.org, we okay. have a lot about Stella on our website. So as, as say it again, B. B 
BSCS. Dot org. Which stands for Biological Sciences Curriculum Study. We okay. don't do biology anymore. <laughs> so okay. we're kind of like FedEx. We just dropped the, the actual name and we just go by our shorthand. But okay. we have a long history with the name BSCS. So we've kept it because we were founded in the 50s to um, rewrite all the biology textbooks in the country. So if you took biology in the 60s or 70s, you probably used one of our textbooks. Um, and if you took biology in the 80s or 90s, you might have used one of our textbooks. But okay. we started as a curriculum design uh, organization, and then we're a nonprofit organization in the 1950s after Sputnik, because the U.S. government was worried that we weren't we weren't keeping up with Russia. So that's our history and who we are. Okay. All right. So that's that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. So can you guys, uh, I would just leave it up to you guys to get in touch with each other. Okay, and maybe, you know, uh, I, I'm going to look into the eye test. I'm sure, Sal, so you're going to look into, uh, you know, uh, the other, uh, your ideas as well. And maybe we can, you know, have another uh, meeting, you know, uh, sometime Sounds later, good. you know, uh, where we, we have something more concrete, you know. A, a quick one, should I not uh, process this uh, meeting? I think we don't need, right? Uh, you mean save it? Yeah, do you want to save it? Do you want me to process and put in YouTube and send it to all of you or that, that's it? If you have it, save it. Let, let, let's talk about it, you know, later. I don't know. You, okay. But you have it. You save it, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, all right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, so, you. thank you, Slava, for, for joining us. Do uh, you have any comments? Uh, not at this point, I don't think. I have some ideas maybe, but I think they need to incubate a little longer. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, we're going to sign off then. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Okay. Thank nice you. meeting you guys. Okay. For organizing this one. Okay. All right. So let's get in touch. Keep in touch, okay? All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. See Bye. you guys. Bye-bye.